We welcome you to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Today in Albany, New York, somebody punches their ticket to the Final Four. Undefeated South Carolina taking on three-seed Oregon State. Oregon State led by Reagan Beers, a big performance in the Sweet 16, and an All-American. And speaking of All-Americans, how about 6-7 Camilla Cardoso leading the way for the Gamecocks. Taking a look at our championship bracket, the Elite Eight is set later on today on ABC. It'll be Texas NC State, and then tomorrow night on ESPN, it'll be Iowa against LSU and USC facing UConn as we welcome you courtside. Hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. So happy to be with you this Sunday afternoon on ABC. Rebecca, we know for South Carolina, they are undefeated. For Oregon State, looking to go to the Final Four for just the second time in program history. And if the Beavers are going to get there, they're going to need a lot from Reagan Beers. And Reagan Beers has been delivering for Oregon State all season long. Led the nation in field goal percentage and shooting a ridiculous 73% here in the NCAA tournament. When she gets two feet in the paint, good luck stopping her. Big, strong, such a great finisher inside. And by the way, she can also defend. Well, Beers with an outstanding performance in the Sweet 16 against Notre Dame. 18 points, 13 rebounds. And Gardner as well, 21 points, 11 rebounds. That combination leading the way for Oregon State. Meanwhile, for South Carolina, you saw her before. Camila Cardoso, just so difficult to stop. Don Staley has called her the separator because the 6'7 post player can be unstoppable. You can't stop her from doing the Macarena either, Ryan Rucco. When she gets inside, she finishes. 10 of 12 in their last game against Indiana where she scored 22 points, can just go up and over players to get offensive boards, finish inside, and also block shots. You see the numbers for Cardoso in this tournament, shooting 74% from the floor as we send things over to another Hall of Famer now, Holly Rowe. Well, in her team's last game against Indiana, Raven Johnson had to step up and save their undefeated season with a three-pointer with 55 seconds left. And this was a long time coming. Redemption for Raven. Last time this year, teams were sagging off of her. A viral video clip of her in the Final Four not being defended from three almost ruined her career. Her mom said her daughter was devastated by the social media backlash. Raven said, I was depressed. I almost quit. But instead of quitting, she got in the gym relentlessly, 200 threes a day, improving that three-point percentage. And against Indiana, she shot 50% from three, but none bigger than the shot to save the win. It is a great redemption tour for Raven Johnson, and she's done the work to be on the biggest stage saving her team. Yeah, she certainly has, Holly. It's been an outstanding season for Raven. As we take a look at today's starting lineups, brought to you by Capital One. Raven Johnson in there, along with Tahina Pow Pow, who has been a tremendous transfer from Oregon for South Carolina. Bree Hall, Chloe Kitts, Camilla Cardoso for the Gamecocks for Oregon State. Talia Von Olhoffen, Donovan Hunter, A.J. Murat, Tamia Gardner, and Reagan Beers. These teams meeting for just the fourth time in their program's histories. South Carolina holding the all-time edge, two to one. And Oregon State, Scott Ruick, their head coach, telling us before the game, he feels like their system is built for this kind of matchup where the opposing team has an advantage in the post, as South Carolina does with their size. And this Elite Eight matchup is underway. And all eyes will be on the bigs inside. Reagan Beers matching up with Camilla Cardoso. Will they send a double team? They do not here. Cardoso can't finish, and a nice box out from Gardner to secure it for Oregon State. And that's one thing Oregon State does really well, is get on the defensive glass, limit opponents to one opportunity. They are 13th in the nation in defensive rebounding percentage. Here's Von Ohoffen. Gardner looking into Beers. Here's Beers facing up and finishing. 
and time taken off the shot clock. That's what Oregon State does. They play a deliberate pace. They share the basketball, use clock, make you defend. That was something we talked about with Don Staley before the game, a point of emphasis for trying to make sure Oregon State does not dictate the pace as that's deflected out of bounds and stays with South Carolina. Dawn Staley and the Gamecocks seeking their fourth straight Final Four. Scott Rourke in his 14th season now at Oregon State, hoping the Beavers can head back to a second Final Four, last there in 2016. Here's Johnson cutting through, flipping up, missed it and whacked out of bounds. No, it's gonna be saved by Von Ohlhofen. And Oregon State again able to control the glass. Here's Von Ohlhofen all the way in, misses the layup. Had a golden opportunity there, and then Von Ohlhofen falls down in the backcourt. Here's Hall cutting in, flips it home, plus the foul. And I believe that's going to be on Beers. It is, so an early personal on Reagan Beers. That's a situation where Reagan Beers should have played Ole defense. Just step aside, give Hall the easy layup. And you've seen the first couple possessions. Oregon State plays drop cover coverage on their on-ball screens. Mid-range pull-ups for the South Carolina guards will be available. Hall completes the three-point play. Little pressure here full court from South Carolina, and it results in a held ball. Oregon State has the possession arrow. That was something Don Staley spoke with us about as well, saying we need to pressure their ball handlers. You're doing so at 94 feet. South Carolina doesn't press a ton, but it certainly was effective against Oregon State at times in their Notre Dame game. Von Olofen loses the handle. We're going to have another tie up, and now it's South Carolina ball. Remember, Oregon State had a ghastly amount of turnovers in their win against Notre Dame. Turns it over 26 times while forcing just five turnovers. Scott Rook pointed out many of those in the second half, however, were dead ball turnovers did not that did not turn into transition buckets. Here is Kitts back into the starting lineup with Ashlyn Watkins coming off the bench in this game. Cardoso can't muscle it in, and Beers had to be a little careful there with one personal. But a smart decision to go right at her, see if you can pick up an early second. Here's Hunter, the freshman point guard, being hawked by Johnson. Moran. Gardner lets it fly, can't hit, and pow pow the weak side rebound. See how quickly, though, Chloe Kitts closed out on Gardner. Hunter hit the floor, got right back up in time to guard pow pow. Pow pow's three, back iron, no, Cardoso. But again, a great look for Pow Pow. They continue to screen with Reagan Beers as the defender. And Pow Pow this year led the nation in three-point shooting percentage, 48%, as Gardner is going to get called for the foul. Looked like it was a clean block initially. It's hard, too, because the whistle came kind of late. Oh, that's a clean block. The wrist is part of the ball. A.J. Marat is called for the foul. So where was the foul? Gardner was the player who blocked the shot of Kitts. Now, Scott Ruick probably is not going to protest too much because he would rather that foul be called on Marat than Gardner, who has been the second best player for Oregon State. but. Didn't appear to be in the play. I'm a little baffled. The kids hits both free throws after a dubious call. Here's Beers. Up to Hunter. On the run, Marat. They break the press pretty easily that time. How quickly, though, South Carolina was able to sprint back. Both of these teams use their bench as well. South Carolina so deep, and Oregon State fairly deep as well. Here's Gardner. Had it knocked away by Hall, who came with an outstanding dig. 
Here's Hall. Pow Pow working behind Cardoso. The leaner back iron, no. But again, on ball screen, drop coverage, mid range, really good look for South Carolina. So that turnover differential in the Sweet 16 tied for the worst by a winning team in an NCAA tournament game since at least the year 2000. Beers gets fouled by Pow Pow on a nice delivery from Hunter. And Reagan Beers is going to shoot two. First personal on Pow Pow. Beers 62% on the season from the line. Knocks down the first. Hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Winner of this game goes to the Final Four, as you see Lily Hansford check in for Marat. Hansford, a dead-eye three-point shooter. Couple huge threes in the win over Notre Dame. South Carolina just one of seven from the floor to start this game. Here's Johnson. Cardoso nearly threw it away. Back to Cardoso. Beers has that one foul. Cardoso able to get it in off the window. Difficult angle, and Cardoso still finishes. And really nice patience, too. She got rid of it quickly the first time. The second time, assessed. No double team came. Took the shot. Here's Gardner off on a three. Gardner 0 for 2 from downtown in the early going. Cardoso right back to work. Cardoso kicks to the corner. Johnson can't hit the three. Cardoso, though, is a very good passer and will find open teammates when they are open on the perimeter. When she gets a touch, good things happen. Good things happen. Kind of like Lauren Betts yesterday, right? Right, exactly. Von Olhoffen over to Gardner. See Beal just sitting in the lap of Reagan Beers. Von Olhoffen trying to make something happen. Five to shoot. Hansford with two to shoot. Hunter launches, and they're going to let South Carolina play on. It would have been a violation otherwise. Here's Pow Pow alone. She got it on a three. Hall running the left side was also open in transition, looking for the basketball to take the three. Pow Pow, 8 for 15, her first three games of the tournament from three. Johnson off the steal. Kitts can't finish it. Oregon State combines on the rebound and couldn't control it, but Kitts out of bounds as she went to grab it. Timeout on the floor. South Carolina, a 10 4 lead in the early going. Now it is time for Get More, brought to you by Geico. Reagan Beers has scored the first four points for Oregon State in this game and had a big tournament thus far. A huge season as well as we send things over to Holly Rowe. Well, at 6'3", Reagan Beers is used to banging up against bigger players than herself. Camilla Cardozo, 6'7", presents a great challenge today, but look at her brothers. That is Riot Rowdy and Rocky, grandpa and dad, mom's on the end, and uh, she would play basketball with her brothers in the driveway over and over. I talked to them before the game, and they said, oh, yeah, she's used to playing against this kind of size. They're both 6'4", and dad even drilled her on the mic and drill. She said, I had to do 100 drops it every practice so she has a uniquely built-in size advantage in her family to prepare her for what she's facing today and Holly it's also interesting she grew up in Colorado playing consistently against Lauren Betts you know in youth basketball and then in high school basketball as well so very experienced going against six seven players they look like a rowdy and a rock they, <laughs> they certainly do you see Beers, an All-American this season, and leads the nation in field goal percentage, battling hard here. By the way, they changed that foul that we were confused about, why it was not Gardner who got it, and Marat, it was changed to Gardner. So for Oregon State, one personal on Gardner and one on Beers in the early going as Beers draws the foul there. Sanaya Fagan now in the game. 
for South Carolina. Another big body. Von Olhoffen with the rainbow mid-range. Von Olhoffen hit that incredible buzzer-beating three against UCLA in mid-February. and One of the best finishes we've seen in a game this season with five traded made buckets back and forth in the last 10 seconds of that game as Fagan says, all right, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take the mid-range pull-up as Beers kind of plays off of her. Malaysia for Wiley into the game as well off the bench for South Carolina. Ashlyn Watkins in as well. Here is Gardner. The South Carolina guards defense so far in this game has been so disruptive. Hunter dumps it in. Beers can't finish it. Hall may have altered it. Here comes for Wiley with all kinds of speed for Wiley. Can't reverse it in. Watkins nearly tipped it in. Watkins then has it knocked away and Johnson able to flag it down. Remember, Ashlyn Watkins has a couple of dunks already this season. And one of the rare players in women's college basketball who can goaltend. <laughs> Here's for Wiley. For Wiley hops in and lays it home. The impressive freshman who Dawn Staley has called a generational talent, Malaysia for Wiley. A 9-2 South Carolina run. Trying to head back to their fourth straight Final Four. Gardner harassed, kicks it out. Von Olhoff in cups, fades, and gets fouled by Johnson. Free throws here for Von Olhoffen. First personal on Raven Johnson. He saw Mylasia for a while. They just explode on the scene. Her first game of her career against Notre Dame in Paris. Just great quickness, can get to the rim. Has supplemented that so well, especially in the last four games with her consistent shooting from deep. Yeah, her last four games, 14 of 25 from three-point range. Has hit at least four threes in three of those four and really hadn't shot it well from three this season prior to that, as you can see. Good time of year to, yeah. to pick up the percentage from deep. Not afraid of the moment no. by Lasia Full Wiley. Von Olhoffen hits both free throws. 14-8, South Carolina in front. 2.25 to go in the first quarter of this Elite Eight matchup. Here's for Wiley, the hesitation and the cup. What a finish from Malaysia for Wiley. And a foul here is going to go against for Wiley. That will be the fourth on South Carolina in this first quarter. And coming off the on ball screen, she just toys oh. with the defender. What a beautiful one handed finish. Whenever she has the ball, you just laser focus yes. because you know you could see something you haven't seen before. On the attack, Favrova can't finish it. And here comes Full Wiley. Hall. Watkins muscles in, rims out, and Gardner secures the rebound. What, the Oregon State guards are falling an inordinate amount of times in this first quarter. We've seen it multiple times with Von Olhoffen, multiple times with Hunter. Here's Von Olhoffen trying to shake for Wiley. Von Olhoffen gets denied. Watkins in for Wiley there for the block. South Carolina just has a different level of length and athleticism. And there have been times where on the weak side of the floor, their defense is in help and just can recover so quickly when the ball is passed out. Oregon State has no time to get their perimeter shots off. And then as they drive, they consistently have shot blockers there to meet them. Kelsey Reese into the game for Oregon State. Beers gets a rest. Here's Hansford, she got it on a three. Lily Hansford, 45% from three this season. Tessa Johnson in for South Carolina. Johnson fades, can't hit, what an effort. Fagan battling on the glass and the whistle will go against Oregon State. Beers on the bench getting a little bit of a rest while Cardoso is also out of the game. Kelsey Reese picks up her first personal. 
Kennedy Schuler getting some time here now in this first quarter. Inbound to Hall, and mid-range hits backboard, and the rebound lands in the lap of Hansford. Final minute of this first quarter. For as much as South Carolina, we felt the dramatic difference in speed and athleticism. Just a five-point game, Oregon State firing again. It's Hansford on a three. Unique left-handed lean on her three-point attempts. Here's Fagan, shoveling out, falls three, short, follows it up, and lays it in. Shot clock turned off, so Oregon State can hold for a final shot here. Cooler winding the clock. Seven seconds left. Here's Hansford. Hansford travels. It was the right idea. Her feet just got a little bit happy before she was able to put the dribble down. Fourth turnover this quarter for Oregon State. South Carolina has not turned it over once. They have time to operate here. Three seconds left for Wiley, given a world of space, misses the three. And that'll do it for the first quarter. Lily Hansford starting to stroke it at the end of the frame, getting Oregon State back into it. Holly chats with Scott Ruick when we come back. Coach, they came out in a full court press, kind of flustered your team a little bit to start. How do you think you're overcoming that? Oh, I just think gradually, you know, I mean, just getting used to everything, you know, their speed, their intensity. We haven't played them before. And so I thought we weathered it pretty well. Um, you know, we missed some shots that I thought we could have made as we're getting accustomed to it. Um, you know, and then we settled in and got ourselves back in the game. We gave up too many layups, though. Lily came in and really kind of changed the complexion of that first quarter. How do you get more of those good three looks? Well, just moving the ball on time. I think, our, you know, our screen game is pretty good, and, and uh, this team sees the floor very well. Um, and when we have those little windows of opportunity, we've got to strike right away. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Well, this is an Oregon State team with 14 more wins than last year, and Talia Von Olhoffen thinks everybody should hop on the Beaver train. This team plays so together, and we're so unselfish, and we love each other so much, and... Um, that might not get views, that might not get clicks, that might not be a headline that pulls everyone in, but it wins games and it's important in between the lines. And so, um, I don't know, I just think this so, team is so incredible and so special. And so um, we might not have the big names in the commercials and TikTok stars yet. We're trying, but. Um. <laughs> I love that, we're trying. And for Oregon State, trying to get back to the program's second Final Four. The other was back in 2016, trying to have their first ever win against an AP number one as Pavrova gets rejected on the drive. That's so interesting, Scott Ruick, the, the phrase he used with Holly, we've got to take advantage of our little windows of opportunity. Well, players like Ashlyn Watkins are over at the window, closing it quickly. Boom. Here's Hansford. Giving it up to Reese. Dom Perova has it knocked away by Full Wiley. Three to shoot. Beers may have to. She does. In and out. And Watkins secures the rebound. Her third. Was it, if that was a three, it was I a think third it was season. a long two, okay. but yes. As Tessa Johnson hits the corner three. Sar hit a huge three the other day against Indiana as Indiana was mounting a comeback against South Carolina. South Carolina had led by more than 20 in that game, and Indiana made it a one-possession game late. Karova dumps it down, Beers waits, and finishes, plus the foul, and that is gonna be number two on Raven Johnson. Just really nice patience and wait the right amount of time to pass the ball to Reagan Beers to go to the ball handler and then Beers just pauses, gets the defender Johnson in the air and able to finish. So Johnson now checks out with that second foul. This group off the bench has done a really nice job for Oregon State. Yeah, and, and they are a team 
that had great success off the bench this season. Hansford doesn't take initially, now does. Missed it left and short. It almost looked like South Carolina thought that was a two-shot foul. Right. Nobody went to the glass. Oregon State was sixth among power conference teams in bench points. South Carolina led the nation as Reese rejects it out of bounds. So you're actually getting more minutes now, Kelsey Reese playing with Beers rather than Gardner. Reese had started much of this season as Johnson back iron no, and Hansford the rebound. Kennedy Schuler also getting extended minutes here. Parova lobs it in. Beers gets tied up, and the possession arrow belongs to South Carolina. That was an outstanding post entry pass, though, to get it up over the long arms of 6 7 Cardoso. Of course, then South Carolina just swarms after the catch. Parova will check out along with Schuler and Reese. Von Olhoffen back in along with Hunter and Gardner for Oregon State. Both teams shooting 33% from the floor. Here's Johnson dishing out. Cardoso from 17 looking smooth. A shot she will take with her to the next level. Camilla Cardoso projected to be a First round pick in the WNBA draft. Wow, how about Hansford stroke? And how quickly she sets her feet. Third three of the first half for Lily Hansford. And now a steal from Hansford. Hansford had been four for 13 from three in the tournament through the first three games for Oregon State. First South Carolina turnover. Von Olhoffen, wow, they're going to get Beers for a screen, and it's going to be her second personal foul. Now Gardner pointed and wanted the on-ball screen set, but then didn't wait for Reagan Beers' feet to be set. This is not always the post player's fault. The guard has to wait and let her set her feet. And Scott Ruick trusting Beers right now on the floor with those two fouls. They dump it down to Watkins. Watkins gets the foul, plus the bucket. And now Gardner picks up her second. Uh, the two most important pieces for Oregon State. Both now have two fouls. And Ashley Watkins is so talented. You're so often in these games, Rebecca, we see foul trouble play a massive role. As that's going to be a foul on Cardoso going over the back of Beers. For Cardoso, that will just be her first. We were talking with Dawn Staley about Cardoso and her performance the other day. And and she said she felt like Cardoso tapped into something more dominant, that there was a different level of assertion from Cardoso in that win against Indiana, where it felt like every time she touched the ball, it turned into a layup. She was 10 for 12 from the floor. She also talked about how she had great balance, wasn't playing it all off of her back yeah. foot, looking to attack. 25-19, South Carolina. Gardner with space, connects on a three. Oregon State, four for eight from downtown in this first half. That has been what has kept them tight with South Carolina. Pow, pow, can't lay it in. Watkins on the putback. Ashlyn Watkins was not happy with how passive she was in the Sweet 16. Has been more assertive thus far here in this Elite Eight, Holly. She actually went to Don Staley after their last game and said, I don't feel like I was aggressive enough. She's a player that has gotten more and more playing time as the season's gone on, but she needed to look for her shot more, and she promised Don Staley she'd do it today. And she has thus far coming in off the bench after she had been starting. Pow, pow, no. Rebound, Gardner. Beers on the bench now with her two fouls. Gardner stays on the floor with her two. Reese back in for Oregon State and another 10 second violation from Oregon State. They had two 
in the fourth quarter the other day against Notre Dame. And that time there wasn't pressure. It's one thing when there's when there's pressure on the ball handler, there wasn't there. That's just a mistake from the freshman point guard, Donovan Hunter, who's been so good the second half of this season. Here's Kitts. Chloe Kitts swooping in, can't finish it. That goes off the leg of Hansford and stays with South Carolina. Ashton Watkins has her hands in almost every possession on both ends of the floor so far in this one. Yeah, terrific activity from Watkins. Paul run off the three-point line, shovels underneath. Kitts travels. And South Carolina turns it over. Dawn Staley has been the coach of South Carolina for seven of the school's eight Elite Eight appearances. Trying to get to a fourth straight Final Four. In the corner, Von Olhoffen misses the three. Rebound taken by Pow Pow, pushing pace for South Carolina. Pow Pow wheels it back. Watkins can't handle it. Ball ends up with it. Cardoso getting ready to check back in. Pow Pow around and off. And a whistle is going to go against Gardner, and that will be her third. Take a look at this foul, Rebecca. Maybe hooking kits there. Watch me. That's a costly foul. Now this was a minute ago. This is the third foul on Gardner. Here's the thing, Rebecca. I'm not sure who does the initial arm hook. Is it Kitts with the left hand or Gardner with the right? The foul is called on Gardner, her third. I'm not sure it was consequential to what happened on the rebound either. Feels like you could have played on. I agree, but you can understand why if the official sees the hook, hook yes. they're going to call it. And so a costly third foul on Gardner in a game that's been called very tightly in this first half. So Gardner goes to the bench. South Carolina dominating in the paint, a 20 to two edge. Here's Hansford, not that time. Good contest from Cardoso. For Wiley, so dangerous in transition. Gets it back, puts it up and in. Timeout Oregon State, the South Carolina lead is now nine. Ashton Watkins is just a joy to watch play basketball on the defensive end, her ability to alter and block shots. And offensively, she can get to her spot, elevate over most defenders, relentless on both ends, on the glass as well. It's been really fun to watch her development over the course of this season and from last year to this year. Still just a sophomore, even though some WNBA GMs, I'm sure, wish she was a senior. <laughs> but Watkins has been really good off the bench today in South Carolina. Nine point lead with Reagan Beers coming back into the game with two fouls. Gardner on the bench with three and Scott Ruick must think, hey, I can't risk four minutes and 20 seconds without either of them on the floor here. Hunter gets it across. Von Allhoffen finds Parova underneath, Beers waits and finishes. Good job breaking the press there, and it turns into an easy leg. If she has her balance, she is going to be able to score through most. And now Hunter trying to come up with a steal and does. Hunter bounces and Parova lays it in. Good response out of the timeout from the Beavers. This is a young Oregon State team for the most part, but they are tough. That three won't go, rebound loose on the floor and it's gonna be hell ball. Oregon State has the possession arrow. One of the hallmarks of Oregon State on the offensive end is their willingness and ability to pass the basketball, not just in the quarter court, but here you see it in transition. Beautiful right-handed drop pass to Beers. 
Barova dumps it back at Oregon State, 19th in the country in assists per game this season. Just impressive considering how slow their pace is. Right. Barova thought about it. Beers battling underneath with Kitts. Barova will drive it, had it swatted. Gets it back. Von Olhoffen's three. Short. Beers the offensive rebound. Missed the layup. Gets it back again and gets fouled. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Final Four continues Saturday, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on TBS. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Multiple times in this game, didn't it feel like South Carolina was just going to run away with it? Sometimes, in some ways, literally, they were just going to get steals and get out yeah. of transition and just continue to score. Oregon State's had a really nice response to that every time. They have, and thus at the line with it now a five-point game. Holly? Well, Oregon State had a really challenging year last year, just four conference wins. And the team said, you know, in the offseason, nobody decided to transfer or get in the portal. They instead decided to go play pickup together at Dixon Rec Center. The team fell back in love with the game, got over the trauma of last season. And that love and connection is starting to show here today why they had the biggest turnaround in women's basketball, 13 plus wins in over a decade. Oregon State in his own defense trying to protect their player in foul trouble. Oh, what a job. Hall comes flying in and gets fouled on the putback. It's Von Olhoffen who's whistled for the personal, just her first, and Bree Hall will shoot two. <laughs> Top right of your screen, Bree Hall just comes out of nowhere. Outstanding job, and that'll be there for the guards as Oregon State, if they stay in this zone defense, just attacking from the perimeter. Here's one of the amazing things about South Carolina, Rebecca. You think about how many of their games we've done throughout the season. And you can think of winning moments from every single player who they play. And throughout the season, Dawn Staley really instills the entire team with confidence so that she can use all nine players of her rotation in any spot. They've all had their moments to shine, and they've all stepped up to it when they've gotten those moments. They have nine players who average 15 or more minutes. They have seven players who average at least eight points per game. Seven different players have led their team in scoring. That's just not the norm for a college basketball team, especially one that has as much success as South Carolina does. Here's Beers out of the double. Hunter attacks the closeout. Pull up, off, and Watkins again so athletic to knock it away, and at last hits Hunter. Going to be South Carolina ball. Watkins challenged the shot and then got in and knocked it away. And to go back to Holly talking about Oregon State, they had 13 total wins on the year ago. They were picked 10th in the Pac-12 conference right. preseason this year. And here they are in the Elite Eight. Johnson short on that one. It will tilt out of bounds. Oregon State's turnaround has been incredible. Scott Ruick done a great job in his 14 seasons with the Beavers. Third largest improvement from any team last season. Already 14 more wins. Hansford gets blocked by Johnson. Here's Johnson running the floor, cutting inside, can't finish, follows it up. Pow Pow bounces, sneaky feed to Fagan. Watkins on the interior, lays it in. Again, Ashlyn Watkins. Lead is back to eight for South Carolina. 16 second chance points off of a bunch of rebounds for South Carolina on the offensive end. Parova gives it up. Funnel Hoffman, guarded by Hall, putting it on the deck. What a pass. Hunter connects on the three. Gorgeous delivery from Von Olhoffen. Oregon State offensively has outstanding spacing. The guards know when they drive where their out passes are to their shooters. Here's Johnson. Johnson will drive it. Flings it out. Hall thought about the three. Dumps it underneath. Fagan shovels, Johnson with three to shoot, and a whistle on Beers is going to be her third. So Reagan Beers gets tied up with Fagan with under a minute to go in this second quarter, and it's Beers who picks up 
her third personal and her father understandably frustrated. What, what am I not seeing, Ryan? I, 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 do, I don't understand. Uh, Lisa Mattingly, who officiated 18 Final Fours, is with us. I mean, Lisa, is there enough there to call a foul on Beers? It looks like the initial contact is a, is by Fagan, I believe, there. Um, let me see. I can't. Yeah. Unless unless Beers on that backside is pulling with the you know with the uh, AKA like the Gardner foul earlier with the with the hook, I can't see that from the view that I have. That's a huge unless. That absolutely looked to me like Fagan was the one who created that contact, boxing out as you're taught to do, pushing backwards, and Beers gets called for the foul here, boxing out, which is what you're supposed to do. Unless Beers is wrapping with that right arm and that's what actually takes Fagan to the ground. But it looks like... She's strong. I don't know that she's that strong. It, it looks like Fagan initiated the contact. If we could bring Lisa back in for a moment. Lisa, on calls like this, we've had a couple where it feels like there's been maybe a little contact initiated from both players. Does that make you as an official any more likely to just not blow the whistle? Well, with some of the things that can escalate the way they do uh, with little to no contact with some of these players, uh, you know, we're, we get a little antsy sometimes and we put some contact, uh, some fouls on plays that, that uh, maybe aren't as big or don't show up as much. But when we see a hook, when we see a hold like that, it really gets our antenna up. And, and a lot of times we put a whistle on that play. Understood. Thank you, Lisa. We appreciate the insight. Lisa Mattingly with us throughout all of our broadcasts here as we march to the national championship. So, I mean, just incredibly debilitating foul trouble for Oregon State. Beers with three, Gardner with three. Barova kicks it out. Hunter. Again, huge threes here from Donovan Hunter to keep Oregon State close despite the foul trouble. About a four second difference game and shot clock. Here's Full Wiley. Full Wiley kicks it out. Hall on a three. No. Watkins again on the interior. Couldn't finish it. Well, Watkins has just been incredible. She's relentless. And now Hunter in trouble with the seconds fading here. Von Olhoffen gets it off, and that will do it for the first half. South Carolina 35 and 0, leading Oregon State by four at the half. Watkins with six, six points, six rebounds, a couple of blocks in this first half as well, and she is with Holly. Ashlyn, coach told us that you came to her after the last game and promised you were going to be more aggressive today. It's shown up all over the court. How did you live up to that promise? Just energy. Yesterday, I don't think I was, I mean, the other day, I don't think I had much energy today. I want it. We want it. And we got to pull out. You have been showing your length everywhere. You've impacted this game defensively. How is your hustle paying off right now? I think it's paying off really well. My team just need to come behind me and keep hustling. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, Ashlyn Watkins has been so good in this first half. South Carolina, four-point lead on Oregon State. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Getting ready to start the third quarter in Albany, South Carolina, 37-33 lead over Oregon State in this Elite Eight matchup, the first of four over these next two days. Coming up next on ABC, it'll be Texas and NC State tomorrow, Iowa and LSU, USC and UConn. As we welcome you back courtside, Ryan Rucco alongside the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. We talked about a partner during the first half. South Carolina is so tough because they can always pull a different string from their nine player rotation. That string was Ashlyn Watkins in the first half. She was absolutely stellar coming in off the bench here today. Six points, six rebounds, three blocks. 
but certainly the Xfinity most reliable player in that first half here. She's guarding on the perimeter. She comes in on help side on the driver, contests the shot, then gets back and keeps the ball alive to teammates. I mean, she is an elite rim protector with her ability to elevate and block shots and change shots and then on the offensive end can get to her spot but where she does so much damage as well is on the offensive glass she is just had such an incredible first half here in this game but why is oregon state in it when they have so many fewer field goal attempts it's their ability to hit from deep they are six of 14 even though on the game they've taken 15 fewer field goals than south carolina so a trip to the final four on the line here in Albany, South Carolina looking to get there for a fourth straight year. Oregon State looking to get back for the first time since 2016 and just the second time in program history. It also would be their first win ever against an AP number one team and give them 15 more wins than they had last season. South Carolina trying to keep their undefeated season going. They are 35-0 as Beers and Gardner start the second half, both with three fouls. Here is Cardoso. Oregon State, again, because of the foul trouble, starts this half in his own. Cardoso flips it in over Beers. Keep going at her. You've got to go at the players with foul trouble. I'm sure that was Dawn Staley's message at the half. Let's establish Camilla inside early. Von Olhoffen. Here's Beers working on Cardoso. Beers and a whistle on Cardoso. And Cardoso very confused by the call as well. She's standing straight up. A 6'7 player standing straight up. As long as your arms don't come down and you're not moving your hips. And Beers is the one who threw her arm out. To me, that should be a play on. And we've seen this all game, that any little contact in the post is being called a foul. And Cardoso obviously still trying to get some clarification there. Beers. It's both free throws. A 39-35 game. That is number two on Cardoso. South Carolina trying to become the first undefeated champion since UConn in 2016, and that shot will not count, a whistle before. Let's look at that foul again on Cardoso and bring in Lisa Mattingly, who officiated 18 Final Fours. What do you think here, Lisa? This looks like good principle verticality to me by the defender. I don't think that this, I think this is just a play on. Yeah. It, it does feel like today there's been a lot of that. Meanwhile, Gardner, Okay, they're going to call the foul on Donovan Hunter rather than Gardner on the other end. Thank you, Lisa. South Carolina can get some open looks here because doubles are coming against the zone or just keep feeding the beast inside. <laughs> Camilla Cardoso is, can be unstoppable. But if the double comes, she's an outstanding passer, finding her open three-point shooters. And you can see Beers trying to be so careful, which, you know, you're going to have a tough enough time defending Cardoso with Was, all of your faculties. Right, right. <laughs> with zero fouls. Yeah. Here's Von Olhoff in. Von Olhoff in. Nice footwork and shovels it in. A beautiful move there from Talia Von Olhoff in. 41 37, South Carolina in front. Here's Pow Pow straight on, in and out on a three. Pow Pow leading the nation just under 48% from deep this season. One of five so far today. Here's Beers. Von Olhoffen will pull and hit. It is a two point game. Had several moments where it felt like South Carolina was going to run away and hide, and every time Oregon State has had an answer as the Gamecocks turn it over. 
you see it, just the screen from Reagan Beer. She is an outstanding screener. Cardoso and drop coverage, so the mid-range pull up there. Here's Von Olhoff in. Off to Beers. Beers bounces underneath, and it is not handled by Gardner as Oregon State turns it over. Important when you're in a zone like Oregon State is trying to contain that you either make shots what they've done or if you turn the ball over it's a dead ball turnover because you can get back and set up. Eight turnovers for Oregon State. South Carolina has not done a ton with them thus far. Here's kicks against that zone, breaks it in as it's taken away by Beers. Gardner in the corner, short on a three. Nice contest from Chloe Kitts. Three minutes into this third quarter. A trip to the final four on the line. Hall in and out on a three. South Carolina, number one in the nation in three-point shooting percentage. Shoot it at 40%, but today they have struggled missing their last nine. Camilla Cardoso has not struggled when she's touched the ball in the post. Don't go away from that. Von Olhoff in. Looking for an angle. Nice work by Cardoso getting around Beers, then running the floor and finishing. Camilla Cardoso getting it done on both ends. Really good job by the big girl, too, after she helps create the turnover to just sprint the floor. Cardoso has the last six South Carolina points. Here's Beers, great position and a nice find from Von Olhoff in. But here, be deliberate. Get Cardoso eventually into the low block and get her a touch. Now she'll dive. Hits, mid-range, no. Rebound, Gardner. And again, no touch for Cardoso there. Ten rebounds for Gardner. She's done it in limited minutes because of her foul trouble. Here's Von Olhoffen into the corner. And a whistle here. It's going to go on who? That's going to be on Cardoso, and it will be her third. Let's see, Rebecca. Reagan Beers trying to post up. It's the right hand right there. The hook on the right hand. Camilla's left side was fine. She was moving her feet fine, but you see the right arm? The hook right there is why she gets the call, foul call. Right there, you see it. So Cardoso picks up her third, has to go to the bench. Marat can't lay it in. Nice contest from Pow Pow. And South Carolina also take advantage of being a little small with beers on the floor. Here's Pow Pow, her three won't go. Knocked out of bounds, it'll stay here with South Carolina. South Carolina, as you mentioned, such a good three-point shooting team on the season, but they're struggling from deep today. Two of 15, so Oregon State can just continue to stay in the zone. They move well throughout it, and it's certainly going to help their players who have foul troubles. Beers coming out right now. Yeah, Beers will come out. Reese in. Marat out. And Parova in for Oregon State. Tight game here between the Beavers and the Gamecocks. Here's Watkins. Johnson into the corner. That three is good. Raven Johnson delivering for South Carolina. South Carolina had missed 10 straight threes before that make. Von Olhoff in into the corner. Reese drives, kicks, Parova's three, won't go. Reese trying to get after it, does, keeps it alive. Parova meets Watkins and thought better of it. Another chance here for Oregon State. Beers on the bench for the moment. There's Von Olhoff and Von Olhoff and can't lay it in. And then it's poked away by Reese. Von Olhoff and scoops it off. And Watkins comes away with it for South Carolina. 
Here is Johnson. Good decision. Under four minutes to go in the third quarter of this Elite Eight matchup. Here's Kitts, deep catch, the turn, and a rejection. Reese on the rejection, it'll stay here. Eight on the shot clock for South Carolina. You came in talking about the bigs. Well, they've been impactful. Reagan Beers on the defensive end with a beautiful block, but the guards have also done their thing. Raven Johnson with a big three. Tomorrow is about as juicy a doubleheader as you could possibly conceive. Iowa LSU, USC UConn, available on the ESPN app. You can watch it on ESPN starting at 7 Eastern tomorrow. If only there was some star power in the games tomorrow. <laughs> In the corner, Johnson rings in a three and a little regression to the mean now for South Carolina, the best three-point shooting team in the nation, who was cold, starting to get hot as we send things over to Holly. Well, Scott Ruick in the huddle just now talked about giving up corner threes. He said, we cannot give up corner threes. You've got to get out to those. Sure enough, they break the huddle, come out, give up another corner three. It was a huge point of emphasis in that last huddle. He knows how good South Carolina is from three. He tried to get his team to recognize that a little quicker. Well, and Holly, that's been one of the most impressive things about South Carolina this season. Not only did they lose all five starters from last year, they played a completely different style and yet had the same results. An undefeated season here in the Elite Eight. One of the things that's remained consistent is their elite offensive rebounding. It's had a huge impact on this game today. How about the freshman? Tessa Johnson has had some big buckets throughout this season. Some huge ones here today. An 8-0 South Carolina run, and they have their largest lead. It's 10. And a steal from guess who? Watkins. Pow Pow eyes up, finds Fagan who lays it in. A 10 0 South Carolina run. And now Johnson nearly comes up with a steal. And a whistle underneath against Fagan will keep things here. Feels like there's just been a different level of energy from South Carolina since they come out, came out of that timeout. Tessa Johnson just a beautiful drive inside, and then Tahina Pow Pow with the vision to deliver it beautifully to Fagan. A 12 point South Carolina lead. They're on a 10 0 run. Parova's jumper rims off. Watkins skies for the rebound. Here comes Pow Pow again. South Carolina pushing the pace a little bit more. Pow Pow flings it out. And now Dawn Staley says, all right, calm things down. Oregon State back in the man to man. That's what happens when your opponent hits a couple of threes. Here's Fagan out to Johnson. Five to shoot. Johnson pedals through, gets denied by Beers. And 3.5 on the shot clock for South Carolina. This block looks a lot like Beer's block on Hannah Hidalgo from the Sweet 16 matchup. Fagan off the miss from Watkins, flips it in. The story of this game has been South Carolina on the offensive glass. Their dominance when it comes to second chance points. And Oregon State needs a timeout. A 26 to 4 advantage in second chance points for the Gamecocks. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. South Carolina picking up the pace, scoring in transition on a 12 0 run after Oregon State had cut the deficit to two. The Gamecocks 35 and 0 and trying to get to a fourth straight Final Four. As we take a look at our game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. South Carolina with 28 bench points in this game. Oregon State, six of 14 from three in the first half, 0 for three in the third quarter, the second chance points. 
just a massive South Carolina advantage as we send things over to Holly. Well, the last opponent's coach, Terry Morin, said South Carolina doesn't have five starters. They have ten starters. And this run has been by mostly bench players. That's what's made South Carolina hard all season. And what I love about what Don Staley's done, their theme all year is love. Like, it, don't be selfish. It could be a different player every night. It could be a bench player every night. They are truly an unselfish team, and it's whoever is rolling, that's who they go with, and the bench is rolling right now. And they are all so capable at any moment of being the player to make that key winning play. Tessa Johnson, Raven Johnson with huge threes during this run. As Watkins, who's had a big afternoon, lays it in. Perfectly, uh, just timed, cut to the basket. And when she catches it there, she's gonna fi have to finish it, because Gardner can still only do so much because of her foul trouble. South Carolina with 22 more field goal attempts than Oregon State. And Oregon State shooting under 38% from the floor as Beers gets fouled by Fagan. And Fagan mystified. As at least first look, it looked like she got all ball. Now Dawn Staley is feeling a lot of the frustration in this half. Unless, did Fagan get wrist instead of ball? Let's see. Yeah, got arm. The thing that's so remarkable with South Carolina, Ryan, and we've talked throughout the course of the tournament that they're the most talented team, and for them to be beat, they have to have an off-shooting day, right? So today, not their best shooting day, 38%. They're, they've missed 13 threes, but they are so incredible on the offensive glass that they can negate all of that by having so many more possessions than their opponent. And it's what we've come to, accustomed to with South Carolina basketball over the course of the last decade. They have 18 offensive rebounds today. <laughs> and this is against one of the better defensive rebounding yes. teams in the country. Yes. Oregon State entered this game 13th in defensive rebounding percentage in the nation. Beers nearly had it taken away. Gets it ahead. Marat to Gardner. Gardner misses the layup, and Fagan is called for another foul. And that is going to be her fourth. I don't understand it. I don't see anything there. Me neither. A little on the wrist, I suppose. Maybe, but if she looked like verticality went straight up and down. My goal every game is to not talk at all about the officiating, so I hate what I'm forced to. Yeah. <laughs> and in the first half, it was a lot of questionable fouls on Gardner and Beers. Yes. In this quarter, it's been on Fagan and Cardoso. Still picking on the big girls, though, Ryan. <laughs> For Wiley, scoops it up, can't finish it, but a foul, and Malaysia for Wiley will go to the line to shoot two. Donovan Hunter picks up her second. For Wiley, it's the first. Wiley misses the second, and that is how the third quarter will end. Boosted by a 12-0 run. Towards the end of the quarter, South Carolina takes a 12-point lead to the fourth. We chat with Dawn Staley when we get back. Get ready to start the fourth quarter. Moments ago, Holly Rowe caught up with Dawn Staley. Well, Coach, second chance points. Your team has just been dominant on the offensive glass. How has that changed the course of this game? Um, second chance points, and we're guarding the three ball a little bit better. Um, they uh, they got six of us, six of, of them on us on the first half, zero in the third quarter. Um, we got to keep that up and still crash the, bas crash the boards. This was a two-point game before you guys just went on that big run. A lot of it was from your bench. How do you know who, when, can change the course of this game? 
I mean, I, I really don't. I mean, they they are seasoned to be able to come in and give us a boost no matter what. I, thought, I think they're doing a great job at just exploiting some of the mismatches on the boards. It may not be mismatches as far as uh, their zone and their man-to-man -man offense, but we're, we're doing other ways. We're going, doing other ways of scoring. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Howard. Well, Dawn Staley's team so often this season has been able to rely upon Camilla Cardoso in the lane, making an impact. We know she's just so tough to stop. One of the other things they can rely on is their defense leading to offense. And just watch inside. All the players kind of manned up with their player. Cardoso uses her feet, gets around, gets the tip, and then I love this. A 6'7 post player outrunning everybody and her guard rewarding her with a beautiful pass. South Carolina did a great job not only surviving that period of time with Cardoso on the bench with three fouls, but thriving during it as South Carolina went on a 12-0 run after Cardoso picked up her third and went to the bench. She's back in now to begin the fourth and a 12-point South Carolina lead. The Gamecocks 35-0 trying to go to the Final Four for a fourth straight season. Here's Gardner, her three, no. The amount of screens that Oregon State just set and they made, the way they made the defense run around them and challenge to get that one look, that's a typical Scott Ruick kind of an offensive set. Oregon State 0 for 4 from 3 in this second half. You heard Don Staley talk about that with Holly after they had hit six threes in the first half, and that's really what had kept them in the game. Watkins short on the jumper, and it's out of bounds to the Beavers. Well, NC State, Isaiah James coming off her huge performance the other night against Stanford, getting ready to go at 25 in the second half. NC State against top seed Texas, that's up next here on ABC. And their backcourt is humming and all playing well. NC State is a tough team to beat. And a team that was unranked to begin this season as Hunter gets blocked from behind by Full Wiley. Outstanding recovery from Full Wiley. Johnson. Bounces off of Watkins. Gives to Full Wiley. Full Wiley's jumper won't go. Raven Johnson with only three points on the day, but she's had an outstanding floor game. Six assists, one turnover. Beers, mid-range, no. Gardner skies in for the offensive rebound. Another chance here for Oregon State. Von Olof in a deep three is short. Not only did Oregon State not make a three in the third quarter, they only attempted three. And a foul here going to go uh, against Donovan Hunter. Nice, be nice, to have, nice to have these kind of this kind of quickness and ups. Gets beat and Full Wiley able to come from the back and block the shot anyway. Holly, well, to see d her play this kind of defense is really encouraging. Malaysia Full Wiley actually kind of had to sit down. Only played three minutes in a game earlier this year. And Don Staley said it was a really tough conversation. We had to talk about making mistakes on defense. You know, she even called her mom and said, "Listen, she's got to get this message." And to have Coach Staley sit down a player of her caliber, hold her accountable in that moment, Mylesia handled it great. She's come back and been intentional on defense, and that is holding your players to a high standard, and it's paid off for Don Staley. Yeah, that was the UNC game. What a pass from Hunter into Beers. Thank you, Holly as Beers finishes. The most remarkable part about that was it was a close game. Yeah. It was a close game with North Carolina. She still sat a player when it could have impacted the outcome of the game. Knew it was important to teach that lesson. And a foul here is going to go against Hall. South Carolina. 35 and 0, trying to become the first undefeated champion since UConn back in 2016. 
And trying to head to a fourth consecutive Final Four. Dawn Staley understandably frustrated with the officiating. Her team has gotten a tough whistle in this second half. Hansford connects on a three. Oregon State's first three of the second half and the fourth of the day for Lily Hansford. And again, when it felt like South Carolina was going to run away and hide, now a seven-point game. You need a bucket. You should get Camilla Cardoso a touch. Watkins wanted Hall to shoot, I believe. Instead, she drives it here and banks it in. What a big take from Bree Hall. And a nice five from Watkins after she'd previously shown some frustration that she hadn't <laughs> shot. Bree said, don't worry, I'm gonna shoot. Just give me a minute. Here's Von Ohoff in. Circling around, Gardner will fire and hit. Gardner with her second three of the day. Six point game. Cardoso the deep catch and a foul on Beers as Camilla Cardoso will shoot two. That's going to be Beers fourth. Free Hall is so dangerous from out on the perimeter. So you have to attack on the closeout. And then there just does a great job insisting her way to the rim. Gardner, how about that? Oregon State finding some life here from deep. Beers, despite the limited minutes, still with 16 points. And five of nine shooting. Cardoso misses the first free throw. It's at 67.5% this season. And we have a lane violation that will take away the made free throw. Who is it? I think they called it on Watkins. 16 assists on 18 made field goals for Oregon State. Here's Von Ohoffen giving it up. Gardner gets it to Beers. Beers muscling in. Five to shoot. Reverses it, but it won't count. As Oregon State. Turns it over. Let's go back to Lisa Mattingly. Lisa, the lane violation here, what did they see? Uh, the lane violation here, you all, is on number 25, uh, Raven Johnson. A player up out that's not on the lane cannot go in until the ball hits the rim, unlike the players on the lane who could go on the release. There you go. Thank you very much, Lisa. So it was Johnson, not Watkins, who was called for it, as Cardoso gets back for a third time. Usually when you see that call, it's when the player is trying to sprint in to get the offensive board and not just kind of wandering in. Right. Here's Pow Pow, the runner is good. To Pina Pow Pow with a big bucket and more second chance points for South Carolina. Here's Hunter turning, taking, and hitting. A fun back and forth here now. With under five minutes to go in this fourth quarter and South Carolina leading by six. Pow Pow. Backs it out. Looking for Cardoso. Instead, it's Watkins. Pow Pow will take. Can't hit. Watkins, another O board. Johnson, no. Long rebound. How wow. did Watkins get there? My goodness. But she saves it to Oregon State. And now an opportunity for Hunter. That was unbelievable. Incredible. That Watkins got there. Here's Hunter. Gets the angle on Pow Pow and lays it in. And it's a four-point game. 3.45 to go. 
South Carolina 35 and 0, and Dawn Staley wants a timeout. Do not take your eyes off Ashlyn Watkins. Look at this pursuit of the basketball, the save in bounds, incredible effort, and then Hunter getting her way to the rim, keeping it close. Ryan Rucco, it's a four-point game. The South Carolina's dominance over the last three seasons has been remarkable. National champions in 2022. 106 and three over the last three years. They're 29 and one against ranked opponents, and they have just bludgeoned teams, winning by an average of 26 points per game over the last three seasons. A whole lot on the line here for South Carolina. 35 and 0, a massive favorite over Oregon State. Oregon State trailing by four right now as we take a look at today's star stories brought to you by Honda. Reagan Beers, Camilla Cardoso, both have had to navigate foul trouble, but both have still had really productive afternoons. Yeah, without question, and it's been an interesting supporting cast. South Carolina, man, Ashlyn Watkins has had such an impactful day. Camilla Cardoso, the only player in double-figure scoring for South Carolina. Oregon State has four. You would expect it to not necessarily be that way because South Carolina has had so much dominant depth this year. Four-point lead for the Gamecocks out of the timeout. Cardoso gets a touch. Johnson drives, floats, finishes, plus the foul. And a chance for three for Tessa Johnson. Get the touch for Cardoso. Let her decide if she wants to go to work or pass it back out. She passes it back out, and what a take by Johnson. How oh, about Tessa Johnson? Averages under six points per game this season, has 11 today, and has had huge baskets in this second half. Seven points, South Carolina lead. Oregon State has hit its last five shots. Gardner, no. And Watkins, the rebound for 10th. A reminder, Texas NC State coming up next. On ABC tomorrow, Iowa LSU at 7 Eastern on ESPN, followed by USC UConn at 9. Here's Hall. Hall gets denied by Beers, who then directs it away, and Hunter comes up with it. An opportunity here for Oregon State. With 2.45 to go in the fourth. Von Olhoffen drives, stops, dishes, Hansford, and short on a three was online, just a little short. Great look for Oregon State. Now Dawn Staley slowing things down, wants her team to run clock. <laughs> she, she's pushing Tessa Johnson into the corner. She wants a clear out for Cardoso. Yes, exactly. Here's Cardoso, couldn't finish it. Beers got a piece of it. Donovan up the floor for Oregon State. Donovan, nice little juke, dumps it back. Under two minutes to go. Gardner trying to work Watkins. Wow, Watkins said, uh-uh. And a tie up here, possession arrow, South Carolina. Ashlyn Watkins had that incredible block at the end of the game against Indiana. Watkins indeed. And this crowd is certainly appreciating what she's bringing on the defensive end. Beautiful block. Four blocks for Ashlyn Watkins. The sophomore who is from Columbia, South Carolina. 135 to go in this fourth. Johnson will fire. Missed everything out of bounds, and it's Oregon State ball. Hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here's Hunter. Hunter to the corner. Good look, Von Olof, and can't hit. And that may have been Oregon State's last best chance 
Coming on a minute to go in this fourth, it's South Carolina leading by seven. Raven Johnson, the leaner short. Cardoso, the rebound. The putback won't go, and it's out of bounds to Oregon State with 47 seconds left. South Carolina has not scored the last two possessions, but they have had outstanding clock management, waited for the shot clock to go down before they attacked or took their shot. Timeout taken. 47 seconds to go, Oregon State On the floor, ball. we have out of bounds, white ball. It's all we do. And they are going to take a look at whether or not this is going to be South Carolina ball. So that last hit, Watkins. Yeah. Now, the officials just verbal that they had said White ball. I thought they had initially ruled on the floor Oregon State ball. They pointed as yeah. if it was Oregon State ball. All right, so they called it Oregon State ball, despite what was just said on Mike. It was called Oregon State ball on the floor see anything there that would overturn that. No. And if you're Oregon State, you get a chance now to talk about what you want to design here offensively on this possession. The out of bounds has been overturned. It'll be Oregon State's ball on the baseline with 48.2 on the game clock. But if they want to advance, they still have to take a timeout. Correct. Now, whether it was overturned or confirmed, it's Oregon State ball. That much we can confirm. <laughs> but you're right. They can draw up a play to get something early and transition offense here and then save the advance timeout for later. And Dawn Staley going to have South Carolina pressure full court here. And Von Olofen steps on the baseline, and Oregon State turns it over. These are confusing baselines. Let's see. She oh, moved she her traveled. feet, and it's not off a of make. Von Olhoffen moving her feet there, yes. and it is not off a of made bucket, so she cannot run the baseline like that. No, on you an have inbound. to have a pivot foot, just like you're on the floor. So just a massive turnover from Oregon State. Raven Johnson will be fouled by Hunter. That is the fourth team foul on Oregon State. So they will have to give one more before they put South Carolina at the line. Number four on Hunter. And yeah. Ruick is going to get Hunter out of the game and put in Schuwen to give a foul. He's also going to put Marat in the game for Gardner. And will he take out Beers as well? Yeah. How deliberately, intentionally, deliberately he did it, too. The guy that well, he's communicating with his players as his assistants are sending the, the bench players in to the game. Johnson gets it into Tessa Johnson, who is fouled by Hansford. They okay, still to come here on ABC today. Madison Booker, the first freshman to win Big 12 Player of the Year. One seed Texas facing three seed NC State, a chance to go to the Final Four. Incredible what Texas has done despite the injury to Rory Harmon. Tessa Johnson, one of one today. Now two of two from the line. Johnson hits both. The lead is nine. Hunter quickly up the floor. The pitch back to Hansford. She doesn't hit. Rebound Watkins. Hall dashes ahead. 
and is fouled by Hansford with 32 seconds remaining in this fourth. I'm impressed that Oregon State knew exactly what to run without using a timeout there. And they got another great look. Hansford's yeah. had a couple great looks here. It was because of the screen set by Beers. Ball to the line. When you think about Oregon State, Rebecca, is, this obviously looks like it's going to be the final game of their season. So much for them to be proud of. 14 more wins than last year. Back in the Elite Eight. Uh, Scott Ruick will take a timeout. And such a young team. They don't have a senior in their rotation. So Oregon State going to be a team to really hone in on next season as we take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. Well, perhaps the most impactful player on the floor today and only had eight points because Ashlyn Watkins was a force defensively all over the glass, just all over the floor. You felt her on every possession that she was on the floor, whether it was on the offensive end or on the defensive end. Her energy was absolutely incredible. Her fight, her competitiveness, she certainly has to feel good after this game on how she impacted her team's ability to make it to yet another Final Four. 31 seconds to go. The smiles beginning to show on the faces of South Carolina. Hunter will inbound for Oregon State. Gets it into Beers. Good look for Hansford. In and out on a three. Watkins another rebound. And a whistle with 26 seconds remaining as Watkins picks up her 14th board. Another well-run play out of the timeout and another great look reminds us of the Tarasi play. Yeah, we've seen that a lot of times in the WNBA. Sandy Brondello special. Hey, don't forget tomorrow, 7 Eastern on ESPN, LSU, Iowa, the rematch. Here from Albany, 7 Eastern on ESPN. And then following that game from Portland on ESPN, it'll be UConn and USC. Yeah, they're jumping for joy about tomorrow's sleep. You and me too. Yeah, I can't wait. It, it's just been, and, and all of you know who have watched throughout, it's been an, a remarkable tournament at this time where women's basketball is booming. The product continues to deliver and take it to even new heights. There have been a lot more eyeballs this season, and the players and teams have certainly lived up to any expectations. And a whistle going to go against Von Olhofen. Now, here is a little nuance rule that you and I talk about. Yes. And is worth bringing up at this moment. Is it going to play a critical role here? Probably not, because South Carolina's leading by 10. But in the college game, you can foul before the ball is inbounded, as long as you are fouling a player who is involved in the play. And we both feel like teams probably don't utilize that enough in situations where they don't want time to come off the clock and they have to foul. 100%. And I understand that teams and coaches want to maybe go for the steal initially but if you know you have to foul try to foul the player before the ball comes in and like you said zero time off the clock especially when you can and tessa johnson isn't this player but when you can in some instances foul someone you'd want to put at the line as yes. well johnson clutch has hit all of her free throws shooting up the floor will dance in can't finish and now oregon state's going to back off For the fourth straight season, South Carolina is headed to the Final Four. Still undefeated and still dancing. Seventy to fifty-eight, the final here in Albany. 
South Carolina once again playing to their strengths. Absolutely dominant on the offensive glass, using their depth. And on a day when they did not shoot great from the three-point line, it simply didn't matter. This is a team that is elite on the off offensive end, elite on the defensive end. And what a performance from Ashlyn Watkins to just bring the energy all game long. And Dawn Staley standing by with Holly Rowe. Coach Staley, your average margin of victory all year long was like 26 points per game. Team. They're resilient. I mean, they deserve it. They've worked extremely hard to be where we are. I'm super proud of them. I'm giving all the glory to God, though. He, God is really, he, he's really funny. He's really funny. Uh, the devastating loss that we had last year to put us back here with a totally different team. If you don't believe in God, something's wrong with you. Seriously. I'm, I'm a believer. I'm a believer because he makes things, he makes things come true. But, when you're at your worst, he's at his best. Look at him. Look at him. What will he do? Four straight Final Fours, Don. What do you mean to you that you built such a great program in South Carolina to do this? It's all about the players. It's all about the players' commitment. You, I mean, you saw we had so many players come in and out of the basketball game. We had some players that sit a little bit longer than they usually do, but they all want to win for each other. So they sacrifice some of their personal goals and benefits for the greater good of our team. Nobody believed we would be in this place right here besides them. And it took almost a half a season for us to really believe that. But here you are. Quick shout out to Ashlyn Watkins, Tessa Johnson, your bench again. We'll see you in Cleveland, coach. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Appreciate it. Let's go, Cleveland. Let's go, Cleveland. Uh, Dawn Staley in South Carolina in a familiar place. The Final Four, a fourth straight Final Four. Who will join them? Texas NC State coming up next on ABC tomorrow on ESPN. It'll be Iowa LSU and USC UConn. For our producer, Kerry Callahan, our director, Jimmy Platt, Holly Rowe, and the Hall of Famer, Rebecca Lobo. I'm Ryan Rucco. South Carolina wins it 70 to 58. Now let's go back to the studio. El, Drea, and Janet.